We're now about to show you our delayed telecast of the early game play today. It was, it was a pretty good game too, Seth, wasn't it? It was. The first half was particularly yeah. good to watch and, and uh, there was some great footy played by both sides. Yes, let's now take you to our delayed telecast of the earlier game tonight between Glenelg and South Adelaide. We pick it up four minutes into the third quarter. The Panthers, six goals, two. Lead the Tigers, five goals, two. Your commentators are David Mackay and Neville Roberts. Into the third term of the Foundation Cup, second round. The Bays have been sprung into action. They trail by five points and they didn't look earlier in this game like they'd get that close. Dean on the left leg, out to Bartlett. He's starting to move around at centre-half forward, giving some options. And Steckel appears to be running out of puff. Kick number four for Bartlett towards Stringer. Thumped away by Baxter. He's been a great player tonight for the Panthers. Maynard crushed. Zuchins with the crusher. Now Valenti out of the centre. Oh, Russell's taken the ground. Crudely and Jewhurst with the free. This game's starting to warm up. Russell gets it off. Cleverly done. Duthy, the long penetrating kick to half forward. Scotty Salisbury. Who else? Courage personified. Should his ground. 14th possession. Salisbury acting captain tonight and doing it well. Oh, Malikin has taken a good overhead mark. And so you'd pleased to see him take a mark like that. Certainly. I think it was the first time he's been in front tonight and, uh, you know, the results there, he took the mark and it'll be good to see him there from now on. Offline, kicks a point and now the scores go to South 6-2, Glenelg 5-3. Baxter held up and uh, the umpire taking Baxter. No, there's a free kick downfield interference against... Salisbury, and that's going to Eddie. South Adelaide forward. To centre half forward. Ball off. Jewhurst. Hit over the ball. Through goes Gaddy. A little bit rough, but uh, having a go. Smith in front. Behind. McIntyre in front it was. And uh, a nice grab. Saw it very clearly there. Took front position. Fought for, uh, fought for it. And that's where he should be. Kicked one goal, one last week. And to date, has no goals, has only two kicks. That looks pretty true off the boot. That's, that's offline. That's one point only. So 6-3, 39. Just in front, the base, 5-4-34. Smith giving away inches to McIntyre. Must get a running jump with McIntyre, not body to body. McIntyre used his body on, excellently on that occasion. Dean received the ball from Gibbs. Likely prospect, kick number four, hasn't been cited tonight relative to what he can do. Schmidt is working hard on the left boot, drags it back around the corner, cleverly done to Copping. And Copping really hasn't shown much tonight. He's an exciting young player, but really hasn't delivered the goods. Capper on the left boot. Oh, Page is there. McIntyre, the sip, but Gibbs. Well, any other defender would have gone the spoil, would have had to have gone the spoil. Not Ross Gibbs, doesn't he back his judgment? Pick number six, Jamison under pressure. He was looking for Salisbury, it's come unstuck. Trevina it was who got it out. Chigwinnon in plenty of bother. Trevina again, dumps it down. Good work. McIntyre, well, was he tripped? No play on. Salisbury desperately done. Rebounds to McIntyre, he's got that ball in the magnet. Zuchins can line him up. Bangs away at the goals, but Gibbs in the square, interfered with. And that's a free, it has to be. So Ross Gibbs was definitely interfered with. Page jumped straight into Ross Gibbs, didn't have his eye on the ball and Gibbs from the full back line will take the free. Gibbs, 25 touches last week, picks up a lot of kicks. Smith, where they go, high from behind, Jamison, great mark, he plays on. For the Bays, looking a little bit better. Bartlett to Chigwitten, they do look better. Controlling the football in front, trying to take it was Maynard, he didn't from behind was Milliken in Graham Campbell's pocket. Milliken, number four. No goals so far. It's, uh, doing, doing well in the ruck. Has four kicks. This would really test his distance, if nothing else. But it's a lovely, lovely kick. Head down, straight leg. His first. The base six. And now he's wide world of sports. Great work by Rod Jamison then. Getting, taking a great mark. Getting the ball on quickly. The first time that Glenelg have really run the ball into the forward lines. Chris Mellican taking a great mark. And being able to finish off the play. Perhaps Neville being a left footer, it might be a little bit easy to kick goals from that pocket. I'm sure you're right, Sue. The 
Vays at the eight minute mark of the third term hit the front by one point. Christy back in ruck. Gaddy gets the ball to ground. Tatterson on the ground. Oh, he ducked the chump me. There's a free kick. Page. He dived through the pack and won himself a free. Or was it Tatterson? No, it was Tatterson. Thought he ducked his head. And that's a shocking kick, but that is his first. He's just come onto the field to place the NY. Thompson got it off. In doing so, there's been a free kick picked up against Valenti. Bay's playing with more urgency now. From half back, Thompson came onto the field at half time when Co Coach Corns made a number of changes. Bartlett fighting hard. Chigwidden cleverly done. Out in support, Lyndon Bow bends it back around the corner. His target was Maynard, cut off by Kapler. Stringer cleverly done. He's a talented player. Maynard bends it back. There's a push in the back. The umpire did see it. Jamison on that occasion pushed his direct opponent. Darren Trevina with the kick. Plays on quickly. Jamison under support. Gaddy caught with the ball. Thompson. Christie. Hodgman's on the ground now. Had a rest with uh, Stringer before the game. And up to half time. Jamison. Left foot all by himself. Plenty of space. Simons plays on around the mark. That's very loose South Adelaide. Very much unlike their first quarter. That's his second kick. Second goal. The rise now 7-4-46. They lead South Adelaide 6-3-39. A nice wide world of sports. Glenhog starting to lift their game now. Definitely have become more urgent in the last couple of minutes. Alan Stringer's been involved. Rod Jemison, Scotty Salisbury's continued his good work. And Gary Christie's also got a good handball out on that occasion. Marshall and Donaldson, just two players sitting on the Glenelg bench. It's Christie, opposed to Gaddy. Gaddy really has shown some improvement tonight. Salisbury, head down, rear end up, tried to burrow through, couldn't do so. Now a ball up. Seven points to margin. The Bays have hit the lead. They trail by 12 points at quarter time. 12 points at half time, and they look like they're in trouble. South Adelaide were playing good football. The, right, the Bays really have regrouped. Valenti out to Kaplan. Caught on the left boot. Good smother on that occasion by Hodgman. Good experience. And now a free kick. Difficult. Kapler received the ball from Dillon. Well shepherded by Rodney Campbell. Behind play, Dillon's caught one from Stringer. He got up. Hodgman head down over the top of it. Caught one high and a free kick. Well, he's lost that and... Uh... Well, umpire Simon Henderson wants to, give, wants to get some control. And, uh, I don't think I can really disagree with both those decisions. He definitely pushed number 12 in your screen, Brett Copping. He then didn't throw the ball back and he argued, so he got 15 metre penalty. It doesn't matter whether the decision was right in the first place. He, uh, he did obstruct after that. So, Kim, he paid the price and uh, he doesn't like it. Let's have a look at him. <laughs> been saved so maybe the gods have uh, smiled nicely on you Kim 7-4-46 the Bay South Adelaide 6-4-39 missing a very important shot there yeah Kim getting a little bit frustrated on that uh, occasion um, he has just started a new job and I think he's had a few pressures so you know we'll let him off for that one uh, <laughs> the human factor super thank you for that Thompson received the ball from Russell, who dispatched the kick from full back. Now Thompson with kick number five. Only on since half time, playing well. Zinchin's fine mark. Max Eddy, I beg your pardon. Max Eddy to half forward. Gibbs covered up well. Knew he was about to get cream. In the end, he didn't. Out to Cruz. The handball's on. Hodgman, can he give it on in turn? Yes, he does. Follows up in support. Now the Shepherd. Well done, Hodgie. Now Lyndon Bow. Forward. Bartlett one-handed. Steckle the thump away. Now across the line it goes. Brenton on a playing a serviceable role across half back. Yes, and uh, so Steckle. Bartlett's taken a few good marks, but uh, Glenelg have struggled a little bit to get the ball through centre half forward. And, uh, quite possibly uh, super. Uh, Bartlett uh, not judging his run at the footy and ending up maybe just a little bit too wide on this wing and not drawing the ball in a bit. 
Yeah, possibly Neville. Obviously, he's taken over the job from Jim West, who's uh, having a little rest at the moment. And uh, I think he's got a lot of potential, Alan, uh, Alan Bartlett, and I think he's going to be a kid that's willing to learn. There's no argument there. No, I can. We saw him, as Peter pointed out previously, on his left foot, so that would give him an advantage in, um, in Graham Campbell's pocket. Five kicks. One beautiful goal just previously. Oh, he's steered it nicely into the square. Up high. No result, but a point for the bar for the, uh, the Bays. 7-5, 47. And leads South Adelaide 6-4, 40. Malikin really starting to show some form at full forward. Graham Corns has shown enormous face in the youngster in the last two years. Hodgman. Love to hear what he's got to say to the umpire now. It really is a case for microphones on players. Hodges spatches the kick forward, but in the way. Doing it pretty well, Darren Trevina. Former South Launceston player. Oh, no doubt about that three. Push in the back. Max Cruz with the kick. Let's tape it down, Max. Looks very fit. Kick number 10. Obviously keen to atone for a disappointing grand final performance last year, and Christie playing very well. Towards full forward it goes. The kick is short. He was looking for Salisbury or Simons. But in the, in the end, it was Max Eddy with the mark. Baxter not going with Christie there. And he really must run with Christie. He's a dangerous player loose in the forward line. And they'll look for him. Juhers with the ball. Grandstand side. Finds Coppy. Playing at uh, centre-half forward. And Max Cruz, who a lot of experience, pushes it forward. Kicks it grandstand side. Nice mark. Smith. Kick four last week, and uh, two this week so far. Off to Honor. Normally better seen in the back line. Page there with Gibbs. And Mr. Alaya will get a hand to it. Pushes it through for one behind only. But, uh, David, uh, South Adelaide just seemed to have dropped a little bit in workload. Quite right, Neville. They were very aggressive. They stung the Bays during the first half, particularly. And the Bays were flustered. They were under plenty of pressure. Could do no right. South Adelaide have just dropped that work tempo. The Bays, on the other hand, have lifted and the result is showing on the scoreboard. They lead by six points, the Bays. Gibbs over the top. Smith. Smith with a penetrating kick. Oh, it's a booming kick towards the outer wing. A big plaque flies. No one marks. Bartlett. Kapler. Oh, ducking his head and going through on that occasion. Was Zunchens. Now the ball finally ends up out with Simons. A long handball. That was well done to Salisbury. That's good play, the Bay. Salisbury can line up the goals. He does so. He's bottled it. Yes, right through the middle. Scotty Salisbury's first, second goal. And the Bays go to eight goals, five. South, six, five on nine's wide world of sports. That goal was set up right from the back line. Ross Gibbs loose again, moving the ball forward. Hardly wastes a kick. I really believe now, unless South Adelaide can get a goal back very quickly, Glenelg are looking, the signs are looking on, ominous for Glenelg. And they're certainly getting on top of the moment. 16, nearly 17 minutes gone. Salisbury had 16 touches to date. We know what a dangerous player he is. The oldest player in the retention scheme. And, uh, still here in South Australia. Millican, or they go, Rover, Chigwitten. Kicks it high. Christie's his target. Good, beautiful body work. Couldn't quite take it. Nicely rode Hodgman. Lord he goes. That's very typical of Hodgman. His first was Peter set. The Bay's now looking very, very strong and nice wide world of sports. That'll certainly make Hodgie happy. Um, after his little frustration earlier in the quarter, uh, he's got over that now and put a goal on the board. And it was a, a typical goal from Kim Hodgman. He's kicked hundreds of those goals in his career and he just loves kicking goals. The Bays have steadied. Gaddy goes off for a rest. The big South Adelaide Ruckman. Not dissimilar to Bob Marley with that here. In the forward pocket, McIntyre and Smith are having a real Barney on behind play. This game heating up. Dewhurst got the handball out. The Bays are in trouble. They're being attacked. South Adelaide don't want to lose this game. They can smell victory at halftime, but they really are letting it slip away. The Bays have steadied. Thompson. Centre field. Drives it long. Well, off the ground, Maynard. That was almost kicking in danger. Salisbury's there. Where is he? Bottom of the pack again. Patterson off the ground. Comes out to Dean. Too far for Thompson. Oh, he's in plenty of trouble, but he was up to it. Committed himself well. In the end, he's forced the ball up. 
the devil, I noticed behind play, Smith really is having a barney. He is too, and uh, there's uh, Gordon Gaddy's boots. Not very often you see players wearing high-cut boots these days. It's good to see a big man doing that. Good ankle protection. Whitford. It's a very good handball. Beautiful vision to Smith. Smith pushes the ball forward under pressure. He just has to get it forward any old how. First back to it will be Smith. Keeps it in nicely for McIntyre. The sense to that absolutely eludes me. And uh, Smith maybe thought that Gibbs was closer than he was in his defence. Yeah, Neville Smith very lucky on that occasion. There's no way he should have tried to bring that ball back into play in the back lines. Quite right, Soup. Ground it goes. Chigwidden got it off to Gibbs. In turn, had support from Smith. He'll atone now. Been a good battle tonight, Valenti. And Bo, two youngsters. Bo on this occasion, the loser. As Valenti drives towards goals, it's going to be offline and through for one behind. So South Adelaide, six goals, five. Six goals, six. In fact, they've scored four points this turn. South Adelaide just suffering from a lack of being able to uh, direct the ball in their forward line. Maybe it is opportunities they're not creating for themselves, but every time a player runs a goal, he, he has no choice but to kick it high to the square. And, uh, there's just no players really hungry enough to do, uh, run at the player with the ball. Jamison against Trevina. Jamison wins the free kick. Centre wing. Eastern side of the ground with his fourth. Pushes it into the pocket. Salisbury was his target. Desperate as he is, he can't control that. South Adelaide. Honour. Away they go, the Panthers. Up high, gets his hand to it. There was Thompson. Duthy. One hand. Socks down. So he's feeling the heat a little bit. Simons along the boundary line. Trying to give uh, to win the run of the ball. That doesn't quite happen. A lot of individual contests here. Brett Dean now. Duthie's kick high to half forward. Underneath it, Heisman couldn't control it. Dillon on his left leg. Puts it out in space. Cruiser will be the first to it. And, uh, Don, unable to shepherd for him. He did attempt in his defence. Through strongly there was Russell. And in doing so, Zuchins has tackled it too high. Umpire Henderson's not afraid to give a 15-yard penalty. But Russell wants to go on quickly. He does. Finds Maynard. Maynard will have a shot for goal. Within his range, Christie in the square. Drops short. Can't take it. Baxter with him. There's that free kick we've talked about before. When he play that falls on the ball that doesn't make an attempt to get out the ball out quickly, will be penalised. Hey, Rocky, I can't help but think that that doesn't uh, penalise the player that's going for the ball. It's not the nature of football. Just encourage the player to go for the ball. Tatterson from half back. Start of the game on the interchange bench. Now Ducey. Oh, he ducked under his bat line. Holding the ball, no doubt about it. Free kick to Schmidt. He is a much improved player. In that situation, David, Cruz sat on the outside and just let Ducey go and do all the work by himself. Peter? Well, I think never that uh, he was waiting for the handball. Ducey on that occasion smothered. Dean on the left foot. Natural foot towards Chigwin and he couldn't quite read it. I think he might have lost it in a light. Jamison in solidly. Free kick play on. The advantage rule goes. Steckel drives through half forward and who's underneath that one? Trevina. Darren Trevina. Tasmanian under 21 state captain last year. Pick number seven. Showed good promise early. Natural left footer offline. Into the pocket it goes. Whitford couldn't take it. Page there. Bends it back. Oh, that was clever work, but no one was able to capitalise. Now Thompson off. Dennis Russell towards the boundary line. Good defensive work. Simons is there. Keeps it in play. Taken to ground by Trevina. Now it's out of play. We've played 23 minutes into the third two. Smith off the ground. Looks beyond. We're uh, just trying to take advantage of some... South Adelaide trying to take advantage of some fresh legs. South Adelaide, Dewhurst. Oh, they go. Whitford tries to give Page an advantage. He does if he can get around. Not up to the snap. Hodgman caught. Crowd one holding the ball. Whitford, Dewhurst. The Panthers still in there having a real go. Robbie Thompson first to it. Nice skills there to complete the catch. It's his eighth touch, Robbie Thompson, having a big quarter. 
both couldn't take it. Dewhurst, nice tackle on him by Stringer. David Kepler, will it come around for him? Not quite. Behind only. Uh, that's five points the Panthers have kicked, so you can see by that that they have had the ball in their forward line, Peter. Yeah, South had some opportunities. McIntyre missed one from only 15 yards out. Page has missed a snap in the goal square, and now Kepler missing. So they've had three relatively easy opportunities, and if they had have been goals, they'd certainly be a lot closer at the moment. Didn't really say that with conviction, Super, as an old Glenelg man. Copping underneath that one. Not able to get there. It was Rod Campbell in the finish. You had to thump the ball away from Chigwidden. 24 minutes and 20 seconds gone, and Rodney Campbell on screen, former Glenelg player, front behind Chigwidden. Of course, the other player playing against his old club is Jeff Winton. Started the game in the centre. Hodgman off the ground. Oh, Maynard tried to have a go as well. Now there's a free kick for a trip to the umpire. Two kicking in danger for he's missed. Patterson. 59 plays 43. It's the Bays by 16 points. South Adelaide were very good early, but they'll need their best to get right back into this game. Bickley draws the player. Over to Trevino on the left boot. He can snap for goals. The siren sounds. Is it allowed? It is. The umpire's indicated one point, however. So South Adelaide have kicked six points in the third term of this Foundation Cup game to go to six goals eight. Trailing the Bays 9-5 on nine's wide world. No doubt the Panthers will be more competitive in season 89. Oh, up before he sentence his mantle. He hasn't been on the field much tonight. Campbell bounds away. Where's the shepherd? Well, Eddie does it. Campbell dispatches the kick forward. Oh, Ross kicks. He's a marvel. Off goes the kick. It's a high one, too. We'll have to fly for this, the big men. Oh, there's a crunch. Copping it was. Now Campbell over the top. He's taken to ground. Jamison, the tackler. Max Cruz is off the field. The Glenelg side. Donovan is on. Duty has gone to centre half back where Cruz was playing. And Brooksby now playing centre half forward for the Panthers. So plenty of moves afoot as both sides really striving for victory in this second round Foundation Cup game. Too so right they are, David. $40,000 to the winner. 25 the second place getter. We'll keep mentioning it, but uh, valuable dollars as Mansell gives the opportunity to Salisbury. Beautiful vision. Good hands to Thompson. Forward they go again, the Tigers. Mansell. Maynard underneath it. Couldn't control it. The half forward line for the Bays will have another throw in. And the Glenelg defence, Neville, have done a very good job of forcing the uh, Panther attacks to the flanks all the time. And now the Panthers are starting to bottle up the Glenelg side. Yes, they have. Uh, they have good defensive work on both sides. Talking about young Bartlett earlier. A lot of future in that boy. Just unable to work out the space at centre half forward at the moment. But uh, has not a bad job. Dewhurst with 13 kicks, 10 handballs, has done his part. Tries to find a player. McIntyre was his target. McIntyre just not able to shake Smith on a lead. And uh, at the other end, Milliken has been able to get away from his direct opponent. And that's been the difference in some cases. High to the wing, on or underneath it. It's good body work against Maynard. He'll play around with it now and try and, try and hold it there. But he's, he's lost his feet, pushed it out to Zuchins. Simon's with him. Player's pretty tired at the moment. Exhausting sort of heat to play in. Pretty, pretty humid. Christy loses it against Brooksby. Up they go, Salisbury. See Salisbury immediately look to Shepard. Great lesson. Underneath it, and a lovely mark to Mantle. Can't blame you to take the risk. Tried to play it on. That's what they want to try and do. Nice tackle, Jamison, on Trevina. Back in there again, Jamison. Donovan in there. The players, as they uh, lose their feet, David, it's very, very difficult to, uh, to do much with the ball. Well, with the amount of pressure that's out there, Neville, as soon as they do lose their footing, they're jumped upon by an opposition player, and both sides have got players at the fall of the ball. That's what coaches demand in this modern day of football. Players at the fall of the ball. Jamison Noy threw that out. The umpire was unsighted. Finally, it rebounds clear. Kapler drives it short. Bickley cleverly done. Good hands, good work. Eddie, where does he go? Oh, he could have gone long. He elected not to. Oh, Eddie came through. That was an elbow. That could have even been reported. Donovan it is with the free kick. David, once again, they're just unable to complete their play in the forward line. 
Yeah, well, they had a golden opportunity on that occasion as Donovan drives it towards Christie. They've looked for the big fella all night. Mansell showing some good form now. He's had a rest. Back it goes. And inboard, Maynard at centre half forward. And from about 45 metres out, Maynard will no doubt have a drill at the goals. Loves goals, Maynard. Joined the Bays from Melbourne in 1982. He's kicked 123 goals from 154 games. Kick number 10, and he's bothered it. What else? He loves a goal, does Peter Maynard. Yes, he likes to uh, He likes to work hard too. And uh, can't be critical of, uh, of that man at all on your screen. He's played in uh, four grand finals now with two premierships to his career. He uh, can play either as a ruck rover or as a rover. And uh, very talented, good use of the ball, and a valuable player for the Bays. Ten minutes gone in the final term. 30 points down the margin. South Adelaide showed very good form early, but really have drifted out. Coach John Reid, I wouldn't think, would be happy with their second half. Graham Corns, on the other hand, would have been concerned at half-time that his bays were just loafing. Doocy booms one into the forward zone. That's a great kick forward. Underneath that one, Malikin. They've brought the ball in quickly, and the big fella has been able to take advantage of that. Well, he's shown some good form overhead tonight, Malikin. They can... In very strong marks. In fact, that's mark number six. Big one goal one. Could really have done better with the opportunities he's had. Eight kicks and three handballs. Four handballs, in fact. Let's not cheat him on the stats. He deliberately lines it up. Goal number two. Good work, Malik, and the Bay step further away. They're 12 goals eight. South Adelaide, six goals eight on nine's wide world of sports. And Millican sharing the ruck work with Gary Christie and uh, I heard Neil Baum during the week make a comment that uh, Paul and Hine might not have a lot of opposition during the year and whereas that might be true of a lot of sides I'm sure they'll have their work cut out when they play against these two fellows they both get their their uh, hand to the ball they both like to tap it to somebody both of them work reasonably hard in defense they're both capable of kicking a goal and consequently cause will leave them on the ground dangerous players valuable players uh, people say that without Peter Carey, they might be uh, <laughs> very playful people. They might miss uh, the tall men a lot, but uh, Milligan doing well. Bit of by play. Players enjoying it. They revel in these sort of conditions. Patterson wobbles one to the half forward flank. No man's land. It's a foot race. Oh, but he's won at the big fella. Showed some speed, but he's run down, throwing the ball. Good tackle, Robbie Thompson. Now Patterson. He's about to have a go at Stringer. I wouldn't do that, Rodney. Oh, but the free kick's gone to Tatterson. The umpires have been very soft in that tonight. They've played some very soft free kicks. Now 15 metre penalty. Kick number seven for Tatterson. Drives in on McIntyre up. Couldn't complete the mark. It goes to ground. White ducked underneath that one. Play on the call. The umpire rightly let it go. And now there's a free kick. It's Gary Christie for the Bays will take the kick. Kick number 13. Looks for Stringer. It really has unsettled a few Panthers tonight. 15 metre penalty. Stringer tells Dewhurst to get back on the mark. Plenty of leads from the Bay forward line. They are moving around. Maynard is one of them. That's the way the ball heads. He ducks underneath it. Now Salisbury. Mansell, good shepherd. Oh, good work, Mansell. That was good vision. Salisbury can bend it back. Snap for goals. I think he's bottled it. He has. The acting captain has got a goal. And that's Scotty Salisbury's third for the night. He's also relishing the acting captain's role, Neville, just as Ross Gibbs did last week. Oh, there's no doubt about that. He's a, he's a, a player that uh, gathers responsibility around him, and uh, he's a very mature player. It uh, is interesting, if you have a look at the way Glenelg went into their forward line there, it wouldn't be the optimum way to go in, across centre half forward, opening up the, uh, the back line of South Adelaide to come straight out. But when they take those sort of risks, Glenelg always backed themselves up with plenty of players. And they had McTavish, and they had Salisbury, and they had heaps of players around there to uh, save the problem, and Salisbury... Front and goal. The Bays have scored nine goals since half time. South Adelaide haven't got one. That's the difference. That's the ball game. John Reid uh, wouldn't be happy. Free kick again. Plenty of those tonight. 34 free kicks to the Bays. 31 to South and Max Cruz having a rest. Looks like a shin injury. Heavily iced. They're not taking any, any risks early in the season. No need to. 
Don't let anyone tell you these games aren't serious. They are for sure. McIntyre offline, one behind. Panthers really needed a goal there. To right, they did. Glenelg, of course, uh, defeated West Adelaide in their last outing in the first round. And South Adelaide lost to Port. So uh, South Adelaide heading for their second loss. And the Bay's well on target for that uh, first prize of $40,000. Rocky, while we've got an opportunity, your thoughts on South Adelaide this year? Certainly more competitive. I think they're uh, they're looking at a far more competitive unit. I think John Reed is uh, fantastic the way he's moulding these players together. Very pragmatic. I don't think they expect to win more than five or seven games. And uh, their intensity and their attack on the ball is fantastic. They really just have to learn how to finish off a bit. Simon's in your screen with a run at it. Campbell cuts it off. Good defensive work. Out of bounds. Forward pocket. For the Bays. And, uh, South Adelaide, of course, have been out searching and recruiting players, David. Yes, they have and done a very good job. Gordon Gaddy, their big ruckman, who we haven't seen uh, since midway through the third term. He's having a rest. Great player. Marty Dillon from Geelong West. Mark Bickley from Solomon Town. We've also picked up a young fella called Dean Slorick from Mildura. We haven't seen him yet. Six foot three. Big lump of a lad. Peter McCarty is also another one from Paran in the VFA. Chris Baxter from South Fremantle. Mark Aldridge from Ridston. Simon Phillips. So there's ten good quality recruits. Marty Dillon from... Uh, Long West we've mentioned, and Sean Feyerman from Millicent. So they've really been busy, the Panthers, and I suppose they really did need to be. Well, they, they made a decision to uh, go out and get the players they wanted. Of course, they've got uh, Woodlands and Winton. I know they're uh, complaining about paying too much for them. will be valuable players. Winton's effort tonight was fantastic. They picked up Mick Johnson from, from the Sunraysia League, Mirabeen, six foot one, centre half forward type. So, yes, plenty of players, David. They'll be very competitive. So, with that player, Smith, kicked four last week, kicked a couple tonight. Spent a bit of time on the bench. Bickley, the new player we told you about. To Kepler. And uh, slowly Smith. High to Brooksby is his target. Two Bay players there, Russell and uh, Duthie. Through quickly with a beautiful Rovers drop. It was Ian White. And that's one of the players we forgot to mention, Neville. Right there, David. Number 14 from North Adelaide. Free kicked after he got rid of the ball. And quite po possibly the reason he missed the goal was that it was interfered with and the free kick uh, right and just so we had White yet to kick a goal for the Panthers you can see that he's not far out the angle really uh, shouldn't worry a league player in he comes led back on it not technically that good he paid the price he hit the post in fact and he kept his uh, foot bent leant back head in the air and uh, offline. So 13 8 86, South Adelaide now 6 10 46. And they're well in control. 17 minute mark, final quarter. Over the top with Stringer. Jamison it was. Mixed up with the fives. Donovan hands it back to Smith. And the Smith, number 24. It's kick two. 11th kick. Goes across goal. And that's uh, something they haven't been doing South Adelaide, which uh, it's good to see them improve on. Let's find another Guernsey in the forward line. Zuchins kicks in short. His target on that occasion was copping. It's uh, well intercepted there by Russell. He read that well, cut it off. And he's looking to get on with the ball quickly. To Gibbs, he finds that player. And the Bays are out of trouble. Ross Gibbs to Kim Hodgman. There's a bit of experience between those two, but on this occasion they've mucked it up. And Valenti carries the ball out of play. Unusual to see Ross Gibbs and Kim Hodgman playing around with the football like that. Normally very direct. Valenti with a free. A high kick to half forward. Brooksby out. In fact, McIntyre. Donovan took it away. Gibbs quickly on. Duthie. A stint at Fitzroy, an unsuccessful stint back with the Bays, and aren't they glad he's back to them? Dylan, former Geelong and Geelong West player, out to Kapler, brother playing for Fitzroy now. Campbell. Oh, cleverly done copping. He backed into the pack. He re needed real courage on that occasion, and he was up to it. Well, Brett Copping, another one of the South Adelaide country recruits last season. Brooksby, Tatterson can go on the left and goal he does pretty easy in the end so that's his first South Adelaide seven goals ten Glenelg 13 goals eight
on Nine's Wide World of Sports. My criticism of South Adelaide in the last four or five minutes was that they weren't using the ball into their forward line, and uh, John Reid seems to have delivered a very clear message at three-quarter time, and that's to try and complete their plays in the forward line. Sometimes it's very difficult when you haven't got major key players in the uh, positions to actually draw, direct the ball to various areas on the ground, hoping to take a big mark. But they've got players under the ball, they're working very hard at the fall of the ball, and now when they get possession, they really are making an effort to actually deliver it to somebody to give them an opportunity to score. On that occasion, they did just that, they scored, and South Adelaide, uh, you can see them in your screen, they're learning as they go. The Panthers' half-back line tonight has been fairly solid. Steckel, Honor, and Dylan. they'll build on that. Max Eddy in plenty of trouble, all thrown to ground by Stringer, discarded like a piece of trash. Kapler to Valenti. It's good work. He got a good shepherd too from Dewhurst. Long into the forward line it goes off. Good work. Smith, he thumped the ball away. Tatterson again. Can he pick it up? It's bouncing like a rubber ball. He couldn't get there. He's run over in the finish. And Schmidt picks up the crumbs. And his own handball. They're working solidly. Copping with the ball. Short into space. Whitford, well done, South Adelaide. But I think the Bays might be just coasting a little bit. This game well beyond doubt. And Whitford from 35 metres out directly in front. An opportunity of scoring his first goal. Pick number two. Promising young player, but on this occasion he's hit the post. It's the second time this term that the Panthers have hit the post. Ian White was the other offender. And Whitford now brings up South Adelaide score to seven goals, 11, 53, trailing the Bays, 13 goals, eight. 20 minutes gone, final quarter. Of course, uh, in this Foundation Cup series, we will play two quarters of 21 minutes each, and the final two quarters will be of 21 minutes plus time on. If, in fact, at the end of the game, the scores are level, the game will continue until after the time on period has expired, the first team scores. We saw in Melbourne the other night where players didn't realise that or claim they didn't, but it's, uh, it's very clear and team managers would make it very clear. Kapler, still plenty of run in his legs. Goes backwards to Valenti, kick in. Donovan using his pace. Plenty of free players on the grandstand wing. Thompson to half forward. High towards half forward, but in the way, Rod Campbell. Looking for a player on the far side in, White. And uh, White, on that occasion, paid a free kick. Of course, the play on only applies to the final. The actual uh, construction of the competition means that each, there will be 10 sides playing during the competition, and uh, the two sides that are ahead at the end will play in a final. Quite right, Rob. Your computer. Shorter goes. Dewhurst. Oh, he can drive towards goal. He does exactly that. The kick is long, but who's going to be there? Ross Gibbs, one hand to it, touched on the line. He's received a free kick for a push. It's against McIntyre. Ross Gibbs casually goes back, picks up the ball. Not sure that he's raised a sweat tonight, Ross. Bounds away. A couple of bounces. He loves that. Goes downfield. He gets the Shepherd from Russell. That's what he wanted. Drives wide to Hodgman. They're combining again, the old fellas. Hodgie to Chigwidden, that's the old to the young. Chigwidden towards Bartlett. It's another young player with plenty of promise for the Bay. Simons went through Salisbury. They just had a misunderstanding. And now Baxter, who opened the game in superb style, gets the ball off to Steckel. His handball is long. Kapler has worked tirelessly all night. Pick number 12. He's been long and penetrating in his kicking. Donovan replaced Max Cruz, and that's a fine mark. Donovan will look to the grandstand side to try and change play. They always do it, the Bays. There to help him out is Robbie Thompson. Really must be aware of that South Adelaide. Good chase on him by Trevina, but it was a trip. Wasn't seen. Hodgman out to, to uh, young Chigwin. Chigwin goes goal with a lovely kick towards the square. The value of a big man in the square and the value of getting it in quickly. Christie with his eighth mark shows that value. 23 degrees here at Football Park. A little cooler, but certainly humid. Read with interest Graham Corns' article during the week about having alternative jumpers and maybe even alternative designs on jumpers. Certainly lighter jumpers. Certainly a pace setter now, Graham Corns. 15th kick. In he comes. Third goal. The base 14 on Nine's Wide World of Sports. Gary Christie 
we should mention was probably the best player on the field during the first half while the Bays were struggling. Billy has been able to keep his side in this game. The Bays now comfortable to experimenting with him in that forward zone. Malikin is having a run on the ball and that will be the pattern of the Bays most of the year I would presume subject to injury. 14, 18, 92. South Adelaide 7, 11, 53. 29 point advantage to the Bays. Five goals as Melican gets the tap out. Very clear. Bartlett. Really a promise in that young man. Playing at centre half forward. Wide to Salisbury. Bays in towards Hodgman. Is a good mark. Well completed. Campbell couldn't go with him. And the old veteran showing fleet of foot. Has two. Gives off. Cross goal. On that occasion looking... But Mansell unable to find him in South Adelaide. Scramble the clearance kick towards the boundary line. It's out of bounds. Grandstand side. A slight advantage for Glenelg. Yeah, well, I know it's early days, but how would you rate Glenelg against the sides of previous years? Well, I haven't seen them play. I've only seen them play West and South. And without any disrespect, that's probably a soft start to the season, David. But to, I was just thinking tonight earlier, they're still using the ball like good Glenelg sides. Still plenty of runs, still plenty of work. I think they'll be around the place. Maynard now received the ball from Jamison. He loves a goal, doesn't he? What? And there he goes again. Popped it right through the middle. That's goal number two. Good work, Peter Maynard, both in this final term. As the siren sounds to complete this game of football park, the Bays have run out easy victors. 15 goals, 8. 98. Leading South Adelaide 7 11 53. The final margin 35 points on Nine's wide world of sports. Well, great performance there by the Bays, running out winners by 45 points. I thought South was superb in the first half, but uh, give credit where credit is due. The Bays came back very, very strongly in the second half, running out winners by 45 points. Talking footy, of course, just to remind on Sunday at Lamaroon, West Adelaide take on North Adelaide, and I'll be keen to see whether West Adelaide can come back. North Adelaide's form in round one was absolutely superb. Then, of course, on Monday night, we come back live to headquarters here at Footy Park for more live action on Nine's Wide World of Sport. It should be a marvellous night's footy. And, of course, going from football to cricket, if it's sport you want, really and truly, it's happening on Channel 9. Tomorrow, of course, the Sheffield Shield game, the all-important one between South Australia and Tasmania. Channel 9 have extended their telecast times tomorrow. We go live at 11 o'clock right through until 12.30. Then we go back at 4.30. So please note, we go back early at 4.30 right through until 5.30 for what should be a marvellous day's play at the Adelaide Oval. That'll lead into, of course, uh, KG's footy show between 5.30 and 6. So if it's sport you want, then Channel 9 is the place to be. Hope you've enjoyed our coverage. Until I see you again, pleasant viewing on Channel 9. Bye, everyone.